What's up everyone and welcome back to LogicFX YouTube channel. Uh, today we're going to be covering the COT indicator that we've made here at LogicFX. If you don't know how to interpret the COT data itself, um, do make sure to watch our COT Forex strategy video. Um, it'll teach you how to make the indicator that we're going to show you today and how to actually interpret that data as well. But in this video we're just going to be going over the indicator itself and how you can use it with the current positions coming up in 2020, the new year. So, looks a bit difficult, looks a bit weird if you haven't seen it before, but what actually is the COT indicator? Well, if we're looking at the line chart here, we have three different participants that we've identified in the indicator. We have the commercial participants in blue, that's the blue line down here. We have the asset managers, which is in purple over here, and then the hedge fund in pink. Now, some places out on the internet will always tell you to just look at the commercial participants and that's actually wrong because who are the commercial participants? Well the commercial participants in the forex market and in all the markets actually are there to hedge out risk. So commercial participants can be places like banks, um, businesses. So you have someone like Microsoft who's exporting millions of dollars worth of goods if the exchange rate moves against them, they're going to take a big loss just from the exchange rate. So what they're doing is hedging their risk, their currency exposure risk in the markets so that they're not losing out when they're exporting goods. And we have the asset managers and hedge funds. And specifically in this video, we're going to be following the hedge funds. And why is that? Well, the hedge funds are non-commercial participants. They're the largest speculator in the market. And why is that good? Well, hedge funds have the exact same goal as us retail traders. They want to make money using their own money. What do retail traders want to do? They want to make money with their own money, right? So why would you be following commercial participants who are hedging out risk in the markets when you could be following the hedge funds who are in it to make money? And they're showing you their exact positions in the market. So that's what we're going to discuss today. So in this line chart, we have a few points. There's a zero line that goes straight through the middle, that's here, and um, there's a lower bound here which is just the lowest point that the market has been, or this line chart has been, sorry, which is at minus 80, and there's a positive point which is plus 60. And just focusing on the hedge fund positions right now, what can we see? Well, throughout the whole of 2019, up until this very day, the hedge funds have been above the zero line. Now what does it mean when they're above the zero line? Well it means their open interest in the market is net long. So they've been net long the US dollar throughout the whole of 2019. And what does that tell us as retail traders? Well that tells us a couple things. First thing is you don't really want to be short the US dollar because the market would be against you. The hedge funds are betting against you, right? You want the same perspective and positioning as the biggest players in the markets. You don't want to be going against them because all that's going to happen is you're going to get stopped out. And well, going into 20, what can we expect? Well, if we see over here, the hedge funds have hit quite a new high back in October. So end of October, early November. And since then, the open interest has been fairly positive above 40. And they've been reducing their long positions so it's been going down. And what have we seen? Well, since October, November, it's gone down significantly, nearly half. And going into 2020, if this trend does continue, right, we could start to see some short positions in the US dollar. So if the pink line happens to drop below the zero line, that gives us a good in indication that we want to be short the US dollar, right? If it's above the zero line, it goes, gives us a good indication we want to be long. So right now, it's safe to say that the market is long the US dollar, right? But it is reducing its positions. And if it does get below that zero line, you kind of want to be switching out your longs for shorts. So that's it for the US dollar. And here's some information actually on what's happening. So the information on the chart is updated weekly through Logic Effects. And the data itself is coming from the US Commodity Futures Trading Commission, which is the regulator. And there's some extra notes down here if you have any 
issues or you want to learn a bit more about who the participants are and their jargon per se. So now that we've covered the US dollar, what would our perspective be on the US dollar? Well, our perspective would be if the open interest, so if the pink line continues to rise and it's above zero on the chart, we want to be long the US dollar, right? We don't want to be short. But if the pink line drops below the line, below the zero line, sorry, we want to be short the US dollar. And it looks like it does have a fair bit to go before a short bias comes in. So if we check out some other ones, the euro, what do we have? Well, we have kind of a flip here. We have hedge funds heavily net short, and they've been getting even stronger in their short bias. So between early December and now, their short positions have increased in the market, meaning you shouldn't really be looking to go long in the markets because you want to be following the hedge funds, right? You don't want to be against them. It wouldn't make sense. They're in it to make money. They're probably the most profitable participants in the markets. So you always want to have their same outlook as them. You don't want to be falling into the traps of retail traders. So that's it for the euro. Euro, net short, you don't want to be long. That's it. What about the pound? Well, the pound, if we have here, has had an interesting move. So throughout 2019 or late 2019, um, I believe that's uh, October here, their short positions have now turned into long positions in the hedge funds. What does that mean? Well, essentially, it could mean that this is the start of a GBP rally going into 2020. And I believe we do have a few videos already out where we've been long the GBP in early October, uh, November, December, because that open interest has been significantly reducing and turning into long positions. Now, what we want to do is now find a currency that is heading into a shorts, because if the GBP is going into long positions, right, then what do we want to match that with? Well, we want to find hedge funds that are net short a different currency so that we have the highest probability of a trade working over a longer period of time and hoping it trends like it does with big money. So if we keep going, Australian dollar, sorry. What have we seen? Well, perfect example, Australian dollar in the past month has actually gone from net long back down to net short significantly and very quickly. What does that give us? It gives us a good indication that we should be long GBP AUD because if not, then it's less likely to work because there's a lot of money going against you. And if you're not already in those positions, you might already be a little late to the party um, because these guys have been in it for a while. They've been in it for the past few months, a few weeks, sorry. And yeah, you just don't want to be going against this big money because when you do, you're going to get stopped out over and over and over again. When that happens, you're going to be blaming the markets, you're going to be blaming the brokers, the stop hunters, all these things. But essentially what you're doing is you're missing out a key step. You're missing out that step of analyzing the sentiment of the market on a larger fundamental scale, you know, on a larger sentimental scale, the big participants. You don't want to be analyzing what the retail traders are doing because all they're doing is losing. Let's put it to that fact, you know, just check any broker statistics on winning clients. I put a big bet saying that at least over 50, 60, 70% of traders out there are losing because you know they don't have a process, a systematic process. They're not looking at things like the COT, which is a no brainer if you're trading because it's showing you exactly what the hedge funds are doing. So let's keep going. Well, I don't trade Brazilian real. I don't think many other people trade it, but you can see it's a lot more volatile than other currency pairs. And we have seen a similar situation where it's gone from net long to net short. So you don't want to be long the Brazilian reel. You want to be short the Brazilian reel. If you do trade that, I don't trade it personally. And um, what about the Canadian dollar? Well, same again, we have another short on the Canadian dollar. Hedge funds are now going to short positions after being net long the past three months. And it's very recent as well, actually, in the past week or so. So this is a very good indication of a potentially, since GBP is flipped now to the positive net long positions, the pink line is now above zero, and the Canadian dollar 
the pink line is now below zero, what could that mean? That could maybe mean that in the future, GBP CAD is looking for a big trending reversal movement. It potentially, GBP CAD and GBP AUD have bottomed out and are now looking towards a longer side, especially with things like Brexit, um, Trump impeachment, all these volatile situations are coming up can heavily affect the market climate right now. Now let's keep going through our list of currencies on the COTE to give everyone here a sentimental outlook of the market going into 2020. So Swiss franc, what do we have? Well, it actually flipped from a slight short net short positioning to a long positioning. And well, what could we take from this? We could potentially take that Swiss franc is going to strengthen because over the past year or so, it has been hovering net short, then it went into net long, it started reducing those positions again, and now it's gone back up significantly. You know, you can see these past few weeks, how it's encapsulated all the short positions and it's gone straight back into long. We could see, you know, some more upside in the Swiss franc going into 2020, especially if this trend continues throughout the next few months. And that's the good thing about COT, it really helps those long-term trends and positions. So if you swing trade or position trade or anything like that, you give yourself those names, the COT report and this indicator specifically is very useful for those type of positions to confirm your idea and give you that confidence that your position is what the big boys are doing. So Japanese yen, what do we have for Japanese yen? Well, for Japanese yen, well, mid, 2019, it was net long over here. And since then, it's dropped into net short. So we don't want to be long the Japanese yen, we actually want to be short the Japanese yen uh, going into 2020. Unless we see this pink line dip above zero, then we want to be long. So keep an eye out for this indicator. It updates every week in the portal if you are, are a Logic Fix member. And just keep an eye on it. Make sure it aligns with your fundamental ideas when you're trading so that you can get the best possible position in the market with the best and highest likelihood of that trade working. So what about the Mexican peso? Well, Mexican peso has been net long this whole year. So interesting there, we don't wanna be short. Hedge funds seem to be strongly long the Mexican peso. It could be due to a few things like trade agreements with NAFTA, uh, with the US, all those type of things. New Zealand dollar, ooh, interesting. So commercial positions extremely high. Hedge funds though, they've been fairly net short the New Zealand dollar. But if you see this big jump here in the past three weeks, there's been a very large significant jump in the positioning of the New Zealand dollar for hedge funds. So hedge funds have actually reduced their shorts significantly just in the past two weeks. And if we see this trend continue, if we see this flip above zero, just like the rest of it, just like how we analyze the rest of it, and it flips above this zero line, we want to be long the New Zealand dollar. But for now, the majority of the market is net short, but potentially going into the future, this could look like a long. And what about this Russian ruble? Russian ruble, we do not trade, but um, it's been hovering the zero line. You know, market or the hedge funds, fed, hedge funds per se, is fairly neutral right now, just hovering the short positions slightly. Um, I'd call this a fairly neutral bias, minor short bias here. If we do see a jump in the positive side, we could be looking at longing Russian ruble in the future. Now, we've gone over all these indicators now for different currencies, and hopefully you can identify and align with your future trade ideas what you want to be looking at. So what we noticed is that GBP is looking to long in 2020, Canadian dollar is looking to short in 2020, and the Australian dollar is looking to be short in 2020. Now, at Logic FX, if you've watched some of Marcus's videos that he's done, he's been long GBP, AUD, and GBP card for quite a long time, and it's now actually confirmed that his position is with the market's perspective, and it could be looking you know, towards a long-term three to six month trend. So with that being said, it could be a good idea now if you already are in this position to be, you know, adding money into it, you know, letting it run, moving your stop up because the participants now are showing that, yeah, they're with you. Or even just, you know, 
taking a conservative approach and just seeing what happens because anything could happen. You know, the market positioning could completely flip in the next week. But overall, it, the COT indicator itself gives us an overall view of the Forex market and currency market specifically, especially for those trading major currency pairs. Hopefully you found this video useful. And again, I'll flick through the indicators for you. You can pause it at any time just to see the most up-to-date data and going into 2020. So this is the US dollar. Pause it if you want to uh, use the data in your analysis. We have the Euro. You have the pound, the British pound, Australian dollar, Brazilian real, Canadian dollar, Swiss franc, the Japanese yen, Mexican peso, New Zealand dollar, and Russian ruble. And that's all the positioning, remember focusing on the pink line of the market now of 20. 20. So hopefully everyone has a good trading year going into 2020 and if you did find this video useful on how to interpret the data and how you can use these COT indicators that are out there or even make it yourself, um, if you don't know how to make it yourself actually, make sure to watch the COT Forex strategy video that we have on our channel and if you do, give this video a thumbs up, you know, comment what you positions you might be in and how you can interpret the COT if you're still stuck, we'll reply to those and make sure to subscribe. Uh, we do have a Instagram page as well if you want to follow that. Link is in the description. Thank you for watching and we hope to see you soon.